Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our webinar is Indications and Clinical Interpretation of the Organic Acid Test. Our speaker is Dr. Wayne Sedano, Director of Clinical Support and Education for Avexia Diagnostics. My name is Michelle Holmes. I am the Director of Client Relations for Avexia and will be your moderator for this evening. Dr. Sedano is a chiropractic physician, a diplomat of the American Board of Chiropractic Internists, a diplomat of the American Clinical Board of Nutrition, a certified functional and integrative medicine practitioner, and is board certified in traditional naturopathy. After graduating from Texas Chiropractic College and Rutgers University in the late 1980s, Dr. Sedano began treating patients in private practice while continuing postgraduate studies through Logan College, Townsend State University, and the Institute for Functional Medicine. In 2005, his focus shifted toward teaching for the American Board of Chiropractic Internists, which led to his dedication to research and development in the areas of integrative and functional medicine, and lecturing for a number of organizations within his healthcare arena. Dr. Sedano is the Director of Integrative Medicine Education for the College of Integrative Medicine and lectures and teaches internationally. Before we begin, I would like to encourage all of the participants to send any questions you may have during the webinar. Please type your questions into either the chat or question box and send to the organizer. We will respond to those questions before the end of the presentation and will allow extra time if needed. A common question is where you can find the recording of this webinar. I will send you a link tomorrow and it will also be available on our website. You will find it by logging into your account and going to client services. If you are, if you are not a client, please go to our website, www.avexiadiagnostics.com and click on become a client to join us. I will now turn over the presentation to Dr. Sedano. Thank you so much, Michelle. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar. And as you can see on the first slide, we're going to be talking about, or I'm going to be talking about the organic acid test and giving you clues into why you would want to order the test, the indication, and also the clinical interpretation. And I have to tell everyone, this is one of the most versatile integrative and functional medicine tests there is, and you're going to find out why tonight. So first, let me, there we go. Okay. So first thing I'm going to talk about are what are these organic acids? And as you can read on the slide, they're a family of compounds. They're the intermediates in a variety of metabolic pathways. So what are the metabolic pathway, pay, pathways? Excuse me. The pathways, think about where you eat food, and eventually food needs to be converted to energy. And all of that transition, all the biochemistry uh, makes these uh, organic excuse me, these organic acids. So that's what I want you to keep in mind. And you're going to see a couple of great slides on that. So during a metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, these intermediates of chemicals, they're going to be normally found in the urine in healthy individuals. The problem becomes when certain ones of these organic acids or a specific combination of organic acids, when they start to build up, and you'll see some of the uh, wonderful examples we have here, that's going to indicate that there's blockages of energy production from these pathways that can be treated nutritionally. So it, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to look at this. So I want to give you a little bit of history on organic acid testing because it was originally used and continues to, and continues to be used excuse me, for genetic disorders of metabolism. As you can see on the slide, problems with amino acid metabolism, fatty acid metabolism, and also metabolism of what's known as oxidative phosphorylation. So, so what's that? You may recall back in biochemistry that there's a chemical called ADP, which is, um, as you know, needs, needs to be converted to ATP. Well, that adds a phosphate, on, phosphate group on there, and that's our energy, the ATP, the storage energy in the body. So that's really the ultimate goal of metabolism of food and meaning fats, carbohydrates, and certain amount of proteins to make energy. So years ago, what they found is that there may be some errors in metabolism. You're probably familiar with phenylketonuria, uh, which they check on babies uh, right at, at, in the hospital. And there's also another one, as you can see on the slide, methylmalonic aciduria. In other words, Phenylketones are being spilled into the urine. That means that there's blockages in pathways. And again, they were looking originally for errors, inborn errors of metabolism, in other words, genetic uh, this abnormalities. And this was one of the key tests for looking for those abnormalities 
particularly in infants and also in our children of early age. Now, like it says on this slide, the organic acids, if there's a genetic disorder, the children are generally in the infants and the neonates, they're gonna present as being very, very, very ill. There's gonna be vomiting, diarrhea, there could be fever. Uh, when they're away from food fasting, they get really, really ill. So most of those are gonna be picked upon very early uh, and checked through the genetic orders. Like I said, neonates, infants, and, and early children, the, the errors in metabolism are gonna be picked up. What, we were, what we're looking at and mainly tonight is what happens on, as you see here on this slide in red, the abnormalities of organic acid production, the intermediates, from a pathological and a non-genetic perspective. Uh, and that's really the basis of this test as we're looking at it from that, that perspective, pretty much in the adolescent and, and the adults, because they, like I said, the errors of inborn metabolism, they're gonna be picked up, the genetics are generally gonna be picked up pretty early because the infant neonate is very sick, so keep that in mind. What the main thing, as you see on the bottom bullet here, the main idea is that looking at these pathways, they can be treated nutritionally once they've been identified. And that's kind of a, a really cool thing when we're talking about integrative and functional medicine. So on this slide and the, and the next two slides that I have, as it reads on the top, right, common clinical laboratory and patient assessment indications for ordering an organic acid test. Uh, so that's what I wanna go over right now. Like, why would you order this test? So let's go over the bullets all the way, you know, on the right here. From, you know, from top to bottom. Now, I mentioned neonates and infants. If there is unexplained life-threatening phenotype where they're really sick, obviously you want to do an organic acid test and probably some genetic testing um, by, the, uh, by the obstetrician to, and pediatrician basically to find out you know, what's going on with that individual. Those are going to be picked up early. Now, when we go to the next slide, certainly infants, children, and some adults can have unexplained cognition and developmental regression. In other words, mental problems or, or, or focusing problems, um, that may be a reason if you have a patient who I can't concentrate to look at the energy pathway production. And like I said, we're gonna go over that. If there's unexplained epilepsy, if there's unexplained other central nervous system problems, and it looks like problems is spelled wrong, uh, let's see if we can fix that. Uh, because you can also look at neurotransmitter metabolism on this test as well. Next, it says on the bottom, if there's unexplained growth retardation or failure to thrive, again, that's going to be more picked up in the infant and the children. Next one, unexplained fasting intolerance. If you have a patient comes in and says, well, they just got to keep eating all the time and all the time, and they don't, you don't know why. If they, if they go into a fast, they get really ill. Of course, there would be blood sugar dysregulation. There could be something going on with energy metabolism making the ATP. Uh, somewhere along the line. And finally, on the bottom, here's exercise intolerance. All of those are indications to order a urinary organic acid test. Now, some of the laboratory indications. So when you're doing your, your lab, lab tests, and this would be uh, the first one on the top, and we'll go through these bullets here, if there's ketones in the urine. Now, we know in, a, in the adults, usually there's something going on with, with diabetes, there's a problem with carbohydrate metabolism. But in the neonate, if there's you know, phenylketonuria, like I said before, that's going to be there's a, probably an inborn error of metabolism. If you have like the next bullet, when you're getting your uh, doing an anion gap, and by the way, hopefully you all are using Avexia and looking at the functional health report because there is a lot of good information on there. What the what you'll get back with that functional health report is the anion gap, and if you're not familiar with that, uh, please brush up on that. But I'm going to briefly explain that. What the anion gap looks, looks at is how acidic is the blood? Is there acidosis going on in the blood? Because the blood likes to have a very tight pH uh, of uh, somewhere around uh, 4.3 to 4.7 pH. And when it becomes acidic, things don't work very well. The anion gap, by the way, it's a calculation. Here's how it works. So we're going to take the, the, uh, the value of sodium and potassium, and they add those together. And then they subtract the chloride ions from bicarbonate or carbon dioxide. And then they, cannot, they come up with a number. And if the number goes really high, the individual is going to be, the, meaning the anion gap goes high, that means that there's, the blood is very acidic. And that could be an indication for, to order a urinary organic acid test. You really got to find out what, what's going on. Why are they more on the acidic side? A lot of things can factor into that. But like I said before, the functional health report offered by Avexia will, will show you that uh, and, and does a calculation for you, which is pretty cool. Next one is, is there increased ammonia in the blood, hyperammonianemia? 
there, that could be an indication that there's a problem with urea cycle or liver not functioning well. Uh, the individuals will be very sick from that. Ammonia is, is toxic, as you probably well know. Next, unexplained hypoglycemia. Another reason to order a urinary organic test, uh, uh, urinary, yeah, the organic test. And on the bottom, finally, is unexplained uh, lactic acid in the in the urine and i'm sorry this time it's in the blood that would be an indication to do the uh, organic acid test as well so and finally these are the non-genetic pathologic functional conditions that we pretty much all see in our office these all of these would be indicators to order the urinary organic acid test fatigue and weakness so that makes sense because if there's a decrease in energy production a problem with the krebs cycle fatty acid metabolism or carbohydrate metabolism and hang in there, I got a really good slide to show you that. If the patient comes in with this, you know, strange diagnosis of fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, or if there's chemical sensitivity, meaning they go down the aisle at the grocery store that has all the soaps and everything and detergents, and they say they cannot stand being around that, uh, means that they're not detoxifying properly, could be some problems with, with liver, or if they're driving behind a vehicle that is spouting out diesel fuel and they get sick from that, that's what I mean by chemical sensitivity. Or if they present with a host of these neurological signs and symptoms, I mentioned cognitive impairment, headaches, irritability, motor impairment, all of those could be signs of vitamin D deficiency and problems with neurotransmitters, which you can pick up on this test. Next, candidiasis or gastrointestinal dysbiosis. This test also has markers of dysbiosis. I'll go through those. And finally, oxidative stress, meaning there are certain intermediate metabolites that specifically show oxidative stress right to the DNA, and I'll show you what those are as well. So these would be the indications to order that test. So it sounds like just about everyone with a chronic illness should have this test uh, with chronic symptoms, and I believe, they, I believe they should for the most part because of the information you can garner from this. Now, so the trick here is when you get the test results back and the interpretation, I want to show you how to interpret this. I know the, the lab, the lab test lab companies are going to interpret this for you. You're going to get a, a full report back from Avexia, which is going to be great. But I, I want to just get you into the frame of mind on things that questions that you would want answers to uh, on the next couple slides. So let's make it a little bit simple. So here, as a clinician, think about this. First of all, are there inborn errors of metabolism like I talked about? That's generally it's going to be picked up on the neonate or the, the, uh, of, of the infant and maybe the child one, two years old, those are going to be picked up. Uh, so next is looking at, is there mitochondrial, is the mitochondria producing energy efficiently? Um, that's another question you'll have. Are, are they, just, are they fatigued? A, a lot of weakness going on. Are functional nutritional deficiencies present? You're going to see markers of B complex deficiency on this test. The next one is, is our altered neurotransmitter turnover. You're, I'm going to show you some of the down, the, the down metabolites or the catabolic, catabolic pathways of stuff like epinephrine and norepinephrine. Uh, look, and, and also serotonin, by the way, can be picked up on this, the metabolites of those, and saying that, hey, there may be something going on with depression. If these run low, they're not making enough. Uh, and I'll talk about that in, a, in, a, in an upcoming slide. And finally, is there damage, oxidative damage going on to the DNA? Are there signs of detoxification uh, problems and the detoxification markers? And finally, are symptoms related to excessive growth of bacteria and fungus in the gut? And this would give you indications that you may need to do a gastrointestinal GI test, so forth, uh, because there are markers on this test, meaning metabolites, uh, that would say something's going on with the gut, and I will show you those as well. So these are the main questions that you want to go over and, and review to yourself when you're ordering this test, and I'm, I'm sure you can get a copy of these slides as well to review them at a, a little slower pace. So let's take a look. This, there's a lot on this slide, but um, uh, we're going to break it down. So let's go all the way up top. I'm going to use my pointer here. Here's fats. There's your food, carbohydrates, and protein, right? The ultimate goal here is to what? Create ATP. It's great energy, you know, for the muscles, the nervous system to maintain the organs and maintain uh, repair of, of the body. So that's really, you know, top down. So this, this whole thing basically is a, the pathway, uh, most of it, again, go, is through the mitochondria of creating energy. So we look up top. Here's fats right here. 
right? They will get broken down, as you know, to fatty acids and then glycerol and, and then cholesterol. And it needs carnitine, by the way, is important to produce this chemical here, acetyl-CoA. You'll notice here's carbohydrates, right? Sugars, they, they'll go through glycolysis and they will produce a final end product, pyruvate. And pyruvate will then create acetyl-CoA. And if proteins are needed, uh, for the Krebs cycle as well. Okay, proteins, and then here's some keto acid. And all of these vitamins are needed here to produce this particular chemical, acetyl-CoA. So what's the big deal with acetyl-CoA? Acetyl-CoA goes into this second stage of energy production, right here, this cycle here. And you'll know that it's a Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, all the way around, right? And the acetyl-CoA gets dumped into the Krebs cycle, as you see here, and has all these little intermediate chemicals here, citrate, and you see isocitrate, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, excuse me, it's a little bit late for me, and you'll notice that all of that is needed to turn this big wheel essentially to make this chemical right here, uh, NADH, and that stands for nicotine amide, nicotine amide ad adenine dinucleotide, and I'll talk about that in a second, but I want you to look here. If there are blockages here that isocitrate say is not going alpha ketoglutarate because of B3, which is niacin or magnesium deficiency or manganese deficiency, what will happen is isocitrate will run high in the organic acid test because there's a nutritional block. That's how this works. If alpha, if alpha ketoglutarate gets very, very high and does not get converted to uh, succinyl CoA during this cycle, well, it could be B1, B2, B3, B5, or lipoic acid that is deficient in your patient not making this conversion. That's the beauty part of looking at these organic acid tests. Now, back to this uh, NADH, which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Now, what's so important about that? Well, this third part and where energy gets produced during this thing called the electron transport chain, I want you to think of it as charging your battery, like a battery being on a charger or recharging your cell phone. Electrons need to go through your phone to recharge the battery or go through your car battery or so forth. That's what happens right here. This, and there's a whole bunch of transferring of electrons back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, eventually to slap a phosphate group onto ADP to create ATP, your stored form of energy. You're gonna notice here that coenzyme Q10 is in here as well. That helps with transferring these electrons. And I'll go over that uh, a little bit in more detail on one of the other slides. Uh, you'll have a lot of fun with that. I want you to focus in on this particular substance because I'll be talking about that later. And that is hydroxymethylglutarate, HMG. Keep that in mind. If this becomes blocked, you do not make coenzyme Q10. So keep that in mind. So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense to you. Bottom line is fats, carbohydrates, and protein need to make acetyl-CoA. All of this goes through here to make ATP. If there's blockages anywhere along these particular chemicals, these are the intermediates now, okay, they can be assigned, that can be assigned a vitamin B deficiency, uh, alpha lipoic acid deficiency. Uh, that's how these are picked up if, uh, if these are not going through the cycle properly. So hopefully that makes sense. The next couple of slides, I'm gonna show you a report that you're going to get back by ordering an organic acid test. Uh, and I want you to think about the slide before. Fatty acid metabolism, if ad adipate and uh, suberate and ethyl uh, mal malinate go, go up, if these become increased, that can be a sign that the fat is not getting into the mitochondria and it could be uh, low on carnitine and also B2. Uh, so um, and be, remember, and you'll, you'll probably need to go over that you need beta oxidation, which I'm not gonna go over here. In other words, getting fat to be converted to what? That acetyl-CoA again. And if there's a blockage there, if these things start to go up, whether the fats, fat in the diet is not being converted, well, it could be that they need carnitine because carnitine helps drive fatty acids into the mitochondria to produce energy, right, like you saw before. Carbohydrate metabolism. Remember I said they're on glycolysis. Pyruvate is needed, and that's going to be, pyruvate is created from glycolysis, and that's going to be converted to acetyl-CoA. If there is a blockage somewhere where, uh, where, say, pyruvate runs high, but, which is not on this test, could be a sign of B1, thiamine, B3, niacin, chromium, lipoic acid, or coenzyme Q10 deficiency. Next, you'll see is that they will actually do a look at the Krebs cycle, right? These are the ones that I showed you on that big, you know, Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, uh, citrate, uh, all the way down the line, all the way down to hydroxymethylglutarate, and 
definitely keep that in mind. They're able to look, are there any blockages between one going to the other, one chemical going to the other, to the other, to the other. If there is a blockage, say from, uh, and you see a blockage right here from citrate to uh, cis aconinate right here, okay, this could be a sign B complex uh, is needed because B complex are factors, cofactors to convert uh, citrate to the next uh, chemical. And there are more uh, B complex vitamin markers, so there's a, there's a lot of good information here. This is a uh, alpha keto isovalerate, alpha keto iso caparate, uh, and I'll explain some of those a little bit later. You also get information on methylation. You know, I'm sure your docs at, at this point and, and uh, all know about methylation problems going on. Uh, methylation is needed for detoxification. It's needed to decrease homocysteine, which is damaging to the body. Uh, methylation is also needed for the, the DNA uh, uh, to keep it from actually uh, turning into cancer in, in a certain way, uh, which I would go over in, a, in another, a whole other webinar there. But on the organic acid test, you can see is there an indication for methylation cofactor problems, right? Uh, methylmalonic acid, if that becomes increased, that's a definite sign of, of B12 deficiency. Uh, so you can get markers and maybe do a little bit more advanced testing on that as well, because these are functional markers looking for B12 deficiency. And by the way, if you're just ordering serum B12 and checking that C, well, if that becomes normal, that may not necessarily mean that your patient is is uh, their nutriture or they have enough B12. You really need to look at the methylmalonic acid, either in the urine or in the serum. So keep that in mind. Now I mentioned neurotransmitters, right? and I'll show you some slides on these on these neurotransmitters. That if there is a problem with metabolism, again, you're not seeing specific neurotransmitters. You're seeing as they break down, as the body breaks things down, whether they run high or whether they run low. So this is vanomandolate, homovanolate. This are particularly related to epinephrine levels and norepinephrine levels. Let's show you a slide on, on that coming up. So you can get an idea if they run low, that means that these individuals may have a problem such as depression or anxiety, low in, ser low in serotonin, um, and, I and I'll show you how to look for that on this test. And on the bottom here, this is the one I want you to focus on this one. This is 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine. When that runs high, that is a specific metabolite of DNA, of damage to the DNA via oxidative stress. So definitely keep that in mind. And there's a lot of information on here, and I'll show you how to work through it when you get it back. And finally, there's some detoxification uh, indicators here. If these chemicals, you don't really worry about the name, names a whole lot on these chemicals. I mean, you can get into that. You'll get a great report on that. Just know when these chemicals run high, they could be uh, uh, N-acetylcysteine, which is needed to make glutathione, the uh, universal like, antioxidant, methionine, uh, also needed. Uh, there could be deficiency in that, uh, which is needed for methylation, and then magnesium deficiency in antioxidants. It's going to give you a, a clue on what's going on uh, with your patient with regard to detoxification. Remember, um, uh, methylation is part of detoxification. If these run high, they're not going to be detoxifying very, very well. And finally is a look at the compounds of bacterial or fungal or yeast origin. Now, here's how I want you to think about that when you're looking at all of these chemicals listed here. Right? Think of bacteria. Uh, bacteria have to eat too, and they also have to poop. So essentially, what you're looking at is the byproduct or end product of bacteria that is not getting out of the that that, that is showing that there is too much of the end products from back to bacterial and also fungus. As an example, if there's a fungal infection um, anywhere, particularly in the bowel, this particular chemical is gonna run high. That's the arabinitol will run high. If there is clostridium species, well, they know that this particular chemical, 3,4-dihydroxyphenylpropanate will run high, indicating that there may be a clostridia species uh, overgrowth in the bowel, and the same for all of these as well. And by the way, this is a urinary indican. I know Avexia offers that as a standing test as well. That's a sign of dysbiosis. Uh, that's, again, I, I consider it like, you know, bacteria metabolizing, eating food, and getting rid of their end products, and that's what's picked up on here. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Now, I want you to, in your mind's eye, remember the first slide that I showed you with the Krebs cycle and this has, really has to do with what happens with, with sugar as it goes through glycolysis to make what? Acetyl-CoA to get into that Krebs cycle like I showed you before, citric acid cycle. Well, 
if pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis, in other words, using sugar for energy, it makes these, all right? It makes this chemical, it makes actually two of them, We're looking at glycolysis. But if pyruvate runs high on your organic acid test, right, pyruvate needs vitamin B1, thymine, it needs lipoic acid, it needs pentothenic acid, which is B5, it needs B2, uh, which is also uh, riboflavin, it also needs B3, uh, niacin, all of these to make this. So if there's pyruvate, one's very, very high. Right? This whole thing, by the way, is called the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Um, for those junkies like me that like to get into the chemistry, uh, but bottom line is, if pyruvate runs high, that's how they figure out that all of these nutrients may not be getting into the body or that for some reason there's uh, nutrient depletion going on or they're not having getting enough vitamins and minerals or there could be malabsorption going on. So that's how they pick these up. And so there is coenzyme Q10. Again, I'm sorry, acetyl-CoA right here. Okay, remember I said before that this that this chemical right here is made from fats and it's made from carbohydrates and, and also proteins as, as needed and that all goes into the Krebs cycle. Now, if there is a problem this getting into the Krebs cycle from this reaction going into citrate, this chemical will spill out right here. This is beta hydroxybutyrate and that'll be picked up on the organic acid test, letting you know that some cofactors of getting acetyl CoA into into the Krebs cycle again to produce ATP, things are not working very well. One thing, uh, a couple things that I want to remind you of here, what you see here in green on both sides, those are amino acids. Here's tyrosine, phenylalanine, by the way, which are needed to produce fumarate. So this is where the pro protein comes in and getting adequate protein because you need protein to make these intermediates, again, eventually to make ATP. So keep that in mind. And as far as the citric acid cycle, not only is it the final common like pathway for energy release from food, as I mentioned, uh, acetyl-CoA, all of these are needed, these chemicals that you see here, to maintain organs and organ integrity and also neurological function. Now, let's take a look at this. This explains uh, a little bit more detail about how uh, certain intermediates are picked up. Remember I mentioned the chemical way back when, uh, a couple slides ago, hydroxymethylglutarate. I want you to look, I want you to think of your patient being on statin drugs, by the way. This is why you see all the commercials. You need coenzyme Q10. This is why you need coenzyme Q10 if your patients are on statin drugs, and for that matter, on red yeast rice, because essentially that's a natural, natural statin. Here's what happens. So what we're looking at here, okay, let me go back a slide here, because I think it's going to be a little helpful to go back a slide. What we're looking at is this part of the energy production. Remember I said the, the, uh, all this electrons being transferred to create ATP. We're looking at charging up the battery here, the electron shifting back. That's what you're looking at right here, known as the electron transport chain, right through here to make ATP. And I, I probably should have put ATP on the, on the end of this slide here, but, but I think you'd be okay with that. So here's what happens. There's some carbohydrates making pyruvate and then acetyl-CoA going into this Krebs cycle right here, and that all goes into electron transport chain to make ATP. We'll just, in our mind's eye, pretend that it's out here. So this particular chemical, hydroxymethylglutarate, right, if a patient is on statin drugs right here or even red yeast rice, right, that blocks the synthesis of cholesterol, but it also blocks the biosynthesis of coenzyme Q10. So if coenzyme Q10, which is right here along this transfer of all these electrons gets blocked, there, this all gets dammed up here. Right? So nothing will go forward. Energy production becomes low. That's why coenzyme Q10 needs to be supplied to patients on those particular drugs. And here's, here's the name of those drugs, hydroxymethylglutarate CoA reductase inhibitors. That's exactly what they are. So they inhibit the production of cholesterol and coenzyme Q10. So what will happen is this whole system will get backed up, and hydroxymethylglutarate will spill into the urine, and some of the constituents from the Krebs cycle will also spill into the urine because this creates a dam here because you need coenzyme Q10 to continue transferring electrons all the way to make our ATP. So hopefully that makes some sense. Okay. And like I said before, you need vitamins uh, for cofactors, for amino acids to be broken down. So I think you got the picture on that one, make those intermediates. Here's another look 
and this gets a a little bit higher higher level look but but i think you're going to be okay at this time uh, understanding these are some of the nutritional markers now these are what these are branch chain amino acids just valine leucine and isoleucine and these are just your amino acids essential amino acids you got you got to remember that everything kind of gets broken down and recycled that's the that's how the body works as, as you know and it makes these chemicals which are picked up on the organic acid test right this is this is alpha keto isovalerate this is alpha keto iso caparate right and the other one alpha keto beta methyl valerate it took me a while to pronounce these things by the way but uh, here's here's what happens if these run high on the organic acid test cuz they're picked up they need B1, B2, niacin, lipoic acid, and panathenic acid, B5, to be converted into what's known as branched-chain ketone, keto acids. Now, why are these important? Because these are the acids that go into the Krebs cycle to make energy. If there's blockage here, or if these run high in your test, that's how they know there's vitamin B1, B2, B3, lipoic acid, and B5, and B5 panathenic acid blockage. Now, the one in particular is isoleucine, by the way, will get changed in the body, transamination, in other words, an amino group will get kind of shifted around as it gets broken down to make methylmalonic acid. And if B12 is low, right here, methylmalonic acid will spill into the urine. That's your methylation pathway. So if this runs high, what happens is, is that B12, there's not enough B12 to convert this chemical, Go and that actually turns into uh, succinyl-CoA, by the way, in the Krebs cycle, and this runs high. So that's how this, the, the, that's how you can get the information from the organic acid test. And I talked about neurotransmitters here. So neurotransmitter metabolism, like I said uh, right here, you're looking at some of the neurotransmitters. So what are neurotransmitters? There's chemi there are chemicals that change the act that change the activity from one neuron to another, and also the myocytes of the muscle cells. So you got a nerve going to a muscle to cause an action, and you got nerves all talking to each other, uh, giving them information or or signaling. So let's talk about that on the organic acid test. First, I want to mention, yes, are there some inherited neurotransmitter disorders? Yes, there certainly are. What we're going to look at in the organic acid test pretty much are the catecholamines, the most common, dopamine, which are dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Those are the most widely investigated as well as serotonin metabolism. So let's take a look at these neurotransmitters on this, this slide. This is tyrosine. So what's that? That's amino acid. And by the way, phenylalanine is needed to make tyrosine. You'll see that in an upcoming slide. And this is tetrahydrobiopterin right here. That's a chemical or actually a sort of a vitamin made by the body that causes a conversion to, uh, for the, these pathways here from tyrosine to uh, dihydroxyphenylalanine and then eventually dopamine. Now, dopamine is kind of that uh, feel-good reward center neurotransmitter that can be low on folks, and then dopamine will get converted during this pathway to norepinephrine right? and then epinephrine. So what are these? These are our stress hormones, right? letting us know the fight or flight. If these stay very, very high, uh, that causes the adrenal gland burnout. Well, you can look at the end products of these. Uh, okay, these have to be broken down. Norepinephrine and epinephrine are broken down into this chemical, which is on the organic acid test. This is vanyl mandalate. Dopamine is broken down into this chemical, which is on the urinary organic acid test, homovalinate. See, that's what they're picking up in, in the urine. So to give you an idea, if, these, if this chemical runs low here in, on, the, on your urine test, your organic acid test, when you get it back, that can be associated with low neurotransmitter levels, and that's associated with the depression or sleep disorders and anxiety. Then you have to ask yourself the question, why are they low? Is the, is the individual under uh, a lot of stress? Are they on burnout? Is there malabsorption going on? Uh, that can give you diagnostic clues on neurotransmitters. Again, picked up on the organic acid test. So here is just a really kind of a cool schematic for you to take a look at. I'm going to go a little bit slower because people say I talk too fast sometimes. So here's phenylalanine coming in from the diet. That gets converted into tyrosine. So what else is tyrosine needed for? thyroid hormone right here. Tyrosine is also needed for our natural opioids, by the way, um, which would be enkephalins. So I want you to think of an individual totally stressed out uh, due to, you know, it could be environmental toxins, job or whatever, and they're making a whole bunch of epinephrine, norepinephrine, by the way, which is the first call to the brain 
which is made in the brain and, and also in the adrenal medulla of this distress hormone and also epinephrine. Well, if, if the tyrosine is running down this pathway to make a whole bunch of norepinephrine, what happens? Thyroid hormone problems could be because you need tyrosine to make T3 and T4, as you probably know. Tyrosine is also needed to make natural the natural uh, pain opioids, the enkephalins. So if tyrosine goes down this way at the expense of thyroid or even, you know, I mean, they're in chronic pain, that could tell you, you know, I'll give you a lot of good information of why stress reduction is so very, very important. As we go down the line, tyrosine gets converted to dopamine and there to, to dopa, excuse me, that's L dopa, it should be, and there's their dopamine. And once again, if there's a problem with that neurotransmitter, this is the one picked up in the urine. It's a problem with this neurotransmitter here, norepinephrine or epinephrine. Vanyl mandalate is picked up in the urine as well, and then you can make a clinical decision and also show your patient, give them uh, you know hard copy data of what's going on uh, and why you're working with your patient or, or, or your client. So this is a very important to, to know about this as well. So here is the next thing I told you to, to hopefully you remember from way back when to focus on the uh, on a urinary organic acid test, this particular chemical, 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine. That is a marker of DNA damage. So if this runs high, you know they're under a ton of oxidative stress due to DNA damage. Now I want to talk to you about, I mentioned this before, but it's kind of good to see it in, uh, you know, in graph form. This is the markers of intestinal dysbiosis. Remember, I kind of referred to this as, as poop from uh, bacteria, um, uh, giardia, which, which is a parasite, um, more bacteria, and this is yeast. So here's what happens, that these are polyphenols and sugar. So the bacteria eat these things in the yeast and parasites. They, they need food just as well. These are the end products of their metabolism that can get spilled out into the urine. So if these run high, benzoate, hip urate runs high, or uh, this one, uh, P, which is a parahydroxybenzoate one type. It's all going to give you an indication that there's bacterial dysbiosis going on. I mentioned the one about the Clostridium species running high, specifically if 3,4-dihydroxyphenylpropanate runs high, well, possibility that there is a Clostridia species uh, overgrowth in the bowel uh, shouldn't be there. Uh, fungus, I mentioned D, arabinitol, that runs high. You can pretty much be sure that there's probably something going on with uh, candidiasis. Uh, probably uh, in the bowel as well. So those are the markers that you're going to get uh, looking at the intestinal markers. Again, you're not going to see the bacteria or fungus itself, but you're going to see the byproducts indicating uh, either you treat it or go ahead and look to do a, a, a GI test, a stool analysis. Okay, so here's the summary of all of this, right? Organic acids, like I said, you're going to look at the end products, like I said, and spill out into the urine so you can get an idea of what's going on with energy metabolism, uh, B12, if their methylmalonic acid is high, uh, neurotransmitter, dysbiosis, damage, oxidative damage to the DNA. Uh, that's, what the, the, that, that's what this information is going to supply. And the neat thing is that when you get the information out, you're going to know that there's metabolic blockers and you can treat a lot of these nutritionally, which is really kind of a neat thing. And speaking of nutrition, I don't know if uh, you folks are aware or not that I'm really proud to announce that the uh, Avexia has a nutraceutical line. And I picked a couple of these here because of what we're talking about tonight. The coenzyme Q10 is right here. They have an essential coenzyme Q10. There's a homocysteine plus, N-acetyl uh, glutathione, and antioxidant max. These can be very useful when you get your results back on your organic acid test. Um, these products are very good. They've been researched, um, and I take them myself, quite frankly. So, so next, I want to turn it over to Michelle, and she's going to tell you how to order the organic acid test and then take some questions. Oh, great. Thanks, Dr. Sedano. So we didn't want to um, let the event go by without actually showing you folks how you can get to the website um, by just logging in, as you can see in step one. And um, once you log in, you're going to go to um, use um, the test menu, and you can type in uh, organic acid test, and it will come up for you. And then what's great is that once you um, pull up the actual test, it will provide you with the details about the test as well as, um, you know, uh, write a spot if you see where the arrow is to click, and then you click on it, 
and then just tell how many um, kits you want to order. You go ahead and put that in and then confirm um, the quantity and place order and we'll, they'll get sent out to you right away. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Savano. This was a great um, um, presentation tonight. I don't see any questions at the moment, but of course, if any, anyone has one, you can use our Ask the Doctor feature. Um, and Dr. Sedano replies to those, all of those questions personally. You can certainly email me um, or, or speak to anyone in client relations, and we'll be happy to get back to you. And of course, when, when Dr. Sedano mentioned the nutraceuticals, um, you can go ahead and go to the Avexia um, nutraceuticals website and also just log in with your credentials and you're able to order anything um, on that website as well. Again, thank you so much, you Dr. Sedano. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Michelle, can you give us the website for Vexia in case um, people want to become clients? And can you just go through that like real quick? Yeah, so it's www.avexiadiagnostic.com, and you can um, right right on the when you right when you get to the home page, you are able to click on um, become a client. Um, you can also um, if you if you're just uh, want to get some more information, perhaps. Um, read up more on the organic acid test or, or view any of the our tests and their pricing, you can register to view pricing, which is also right on that home page. And we'll send you some trial credentials. And those credentials can be used or they're good for about 30 days. And you can um, spend some time on the website. Uh, you could go to the client resources section. We, we keep um, all of Dr. Sedano's materials there as well as everything else we've accumulated over the past 10 years. And um, Certainly, like I said, let me you know let me know. I, I try to speak to each and every person um, personally that is looking to become a client or does in fact become a client. Uh, we're, we're here yeah, I for you. Oh, and go ahead. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. I just want to real quick for everyone. You know, I I do. Uh, if, if you have problems, I know we, there was a lot of information on on this uh, slide presentation, but just please keep in mind, as a client, uh, you get direct access to me to help you out. If you have any questions on the organic acid test or, 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 or all of the tests, uh, you're able to just, uh, it's called Ask the Doctor. You can click on that, fire me out an email th through the Abexia site, and, and I'll do my best to, to break it down and to help you, to help your clients um, and patients. Uh, so please keep that in mind as well. All right. Well, everyone have a good evening, and we'll, uh, we'll end it for tonight. Thank you so much, Michelle. All right. Good night.